sasa there is a lot that is happening in the house of the lord kuna mengi ambayo yanatendeka katika nyumba ya bwana and today i want to engage you on a very important issue na leo hii ningependa kukabiliana nanyi katika swala nyeti now allow me share certain three visions here sasa mniruhusu nikashiriki maono matatu hapa I'm going to share them here and then after that I'll reveal to you what the Lord is saying. Nitaenda kuyashiriki hapa alafu baada ya hapo nitafunua kile ambacho Bwana anasema. Uh that was on uh, on the 2nd of April. Hiyo ilikuwa tarehe 2 mwezi wa Aprili. The year 2004. Mwaka wa 2004. When God the Father Wakati ambapo Mungu Baba the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ Baba wa Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo when he came Wakati alipokuja he that was visiting this meeting ye, yesterday yeye ambaye alikuwa akiutembelea mkutano huu jana when he came alipokuja to speak to me kuzungumza pamoja nami about the coming of the Messiah kuhusiana na kukuja kwa Masihi now in that tremendous visitation katika mtembeleo huo wa ajabu when he came to speak with me alipokuja kuzungumza nami he lifted me up aliniinua juu and when he lifted me up na aliponiinua juu i found myself nikajipata mwenyewe standing right in front of the throne of god nikiwa nimesimama mbele ya kiti cha enzi cha mungu second of april Tarembili mwezi wa Aprili 2004 mwaka wa 2004 and standing at that place na nikiwa nimesimama mahali pale i could see the mountain like glory ningeweza kuona ule utukufu uliokuwa mkubwa kama mlima thank you so much that covered the throne of god ambao ulifunika enzi ya Mungu the mountain like glory ule utukufu uliokuwa mkubwa kama mlima that covered the throne of god that was in front of me ambao ulifunika enzi ya Mungu iliyokuwa mbele yangu and as i was standing there na nilipokuwa nimesimama pale even though i could not see what was happening in there hata ingawaje singeweza kuona nini kilikuwa kinatendeka mle ndani he made me know alinisababisha nijue that he that sits on the throne ya kwamba yeye aketie katika enzi was on the throne alikuwa katika enzi and that he was going to pay particular attention to the conversation that was going to take place with me there na alikuwa anaenda kumakinika mno kwa uli yale majadiliano ambayo alikuwa anaenda kutendeka pale and so na hivyo basi at that place katika mahali pale the glory utukufu covering the throne ukifunika enzi i'm standing there nimesimama pale he has made me know that he is watching is paying attention amenisababisha nijue kwamba anatazama anasikiza then all of a sudden alafu ghafla bin vu john the baptist yohana mpatizaji appeared on my right hand side akajitokeza katika upande wangu wa kulia before he stood there kabla ya kusimama pale i'm sure most of you know the narrative because we have uh, the articles are in the web most people have read it najua wengi wenu mnajua matukio hayo manake iko kwenye mtandao watu wengi mmekushaisoma so he walked a little bit in front kwa hivyo basi akakuja hapo mbele then he came and stood there akaja akasimama pale and when he stood there na aliposimama pale he began to speak with me about the lamb of god akaanza kunizungumzia kuhusu mwana kondoo wa mungu that was about to come back ambaye alikuwa karibu arudi the lamb of god mwana kondoo wa mungu that died for man aliyekufa kwa ajili ya wanadamu and there's a lot of dynamic in that conversation itself na, na kuna mengi mno katika majadiliano hayo mwenyewe because i always say i i asked him i asked him but why did he have to die there's a lot of dynamic which i'm uh, i'm avoiding now because of time kuna vipengee vingi mle ndani maana yake nilimuuliza kwa nini ilibidi afe kuna vipengee mingi sana mle ndani la uenda sitashiriki sasa but he said lakini alisema that it was the will of the father kwamba yalikuwa ni mapenzi ya baba that he be crucified kwamba akasulubishwe abused atukanwe to deliver man ili amkomboe mwanadamu so as this conversation goes on here wakati majadiliano haya yanaendelea hapa then the voice from the throne said kisha sauti kutoka katika enzi ikasema let me show you Hebu niwaonyeshe what is about to happen to the earth. Kile ambacho karibu kinaitendekea dunia. And now I remember I saw a vision within a vision. Na nakumbuka nikaona maono ndani ya maono. 
when now he lifted me from there. Pale, and he took me to Jerusalem. Na and over there, na, I saw changes that would take place. Na in Jerusalem, Kule that are significant for the end we are in. Kwa ajili ya mwisho ambao tuko ndani yake. I saw a first change of leadership. Nikaona mabadiliko ya kwanza ya uongozi. I, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this because it's on the web. Nina uhakika kwamba wengi wenu mnajua hii manake iko kwenye mtandao. The first change of leadership in Jerusalem. Mabadiliko ya kwanza ya uongozi katika Yerusalem. And then a second change. Alafu kisha mabadiliko ya pili. And the distress in the capitals of the world. So he took me across the earth. I saw the capital cities of the world. Na katika miji mikuu ya ulimwengu alinipeleka katika miji tofauti tofauti ya ulimwengu and i remember nami nakumbuka after that he brought me back to stand before the throne baada ya hapo baada ya hapo akanirejesha kusimama mbele ya enzi and when i checked this way na nilipogeuka namna hii i saw that john the baptist was still standing here nikaona kwamba yohana mbatizaji alikuwa angalia amesimama hapa and then after that he said behold after those changes alafu baada ya hayo mabadiliko akasema then he said behold the lamb of god akasema tazama mwana kondoo wa mungu there was a small ridge kulikuwa na mtaro kidogo between me and the throne kati yangu na enzi a small ridge kulikuwa na mtaro kidogo then all of a sudden alafu ghafla bin vu after he had said that baada ya kusema hayo that behold the lamb of god kwamba tazama mwana kondoo wa mungu then the lamb of god now left from the throne and came kisha mwana kondoo wa mungu akatoka katika enzi na akakuja and the ridge disappeared alafu ule mtaro ukatoweka And I remember Nami nakumbuka when I looked at his raiment Nilipo tazama vazi lake The raiment of John the Baptist Ile vazi la Yohana mpatizaji It became transfigured Likabadilika Super glorious Likakuwa la utukufu mwingi To the extent that I knew that if somebody touched with a pen Kwaki, you could see that dot Kwa kiwango kwamba niligundua kwamba kama mtu angeguza na ile wino wa kalamu ungeweza kuiona Now I need to move to a second conversation. Ipo basi nataka kusonga katika majadiliano ya pili. I was going to Venezuela for national revival there. Nilikuwa naenda Venezuela kwa ajili ya uvuvio wa kitaifa huko. And then uh, I was to wait for a flight the next day to cross the Atlantic from alafu, Johannesburg. Alafu nilikuwa na ngoja ndege kwa ajili ya kusafiri kwingine kule Johannesburg to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Ili kuvuka ile bahari ya Atlantic. And so as I was there. Na ipo basi nalipokuwa pale. In Johannesburg. Katika Johannesburg. Uh, I, I was sleeping on the floor of the airport. Nilikuwa nalala sakafuni katika kituo cha ndege. And uh, as I was sleeping on the floor my bag was my pillow. Na nilipo kuwa nalala pale katika sakafu begi langu lilokuwa ndilo lilokuwa mto wangu and there was a lot of announcement in that airport na kulikuwa na matangazo mengi yanayofanywa katika hicho kituo cha ndege but as i lay down there on the floor with my bag lakini nalipolala pale chini sakafuni pamoja na begi langu the lord came and visited me right there bwana akaja na kunitembelea pale pale and spoke to me on this conversation i want to share now kisha akazungumza nami kuhusiana na majadiliano haya ambayo nataka kuzungumza In this conversation katika majadiliano haya I was asleep there on the floor of the airport in Johannesburg Nilikuwa nimelala pale chini katika kituo cha ndege Johannesburg Then the voice said Kisha sauti ikasema Look and see who is coming Tazama ukaone nani anayekuja And I remember that when I looked inside that conversation when i look left nami nakumbuka nilipo atazama ndani ya majadiliano hayo nilipoangalia kushoto then i saw the rider of the pale horse kisha nikamuona yule mpandaji wa farasi wa kijivujivu this is the first part of that conversation hii ni sehemu ya kwanza ya majadiliano hayo and you all know those who have read this na nyote mwajua wale ambao umesoma haya from that part i gave the prophecy of the bloodshed you see in the arab world kutoka hapo nikape na unabii wa umwagikaji wa damu ambao mnaona katika inchi za Kiarabu July 29th July tarehe 29 the year 2009 mwaka wa 2009 before the bloodshed came to libya came to iraq came to syria before that happened kabla ya umwagikaji wa damu kuja iraq kuja syria 
So that first part of the release of the rider of the pale horse. That is the prophecy of the bloodshed you see that has swept the Arab world here. However, for this conversation I want to focus on the second part. In the second part, for the first time, God the Father Mungu Baba, he showed me the church kanisa, when she has been taken into heaven. Kwenda binguni. Let me repeat this. Hebu haya. I have seen the Lord take the church in several conversations. Katika mengi mno. But I had never seen the church inside. Lakini kuona kanisa so that was the first time Basi that I actually saw the church inside heaven. And I want to demonstrate something important for this message today. From where the Lord had lifted me up. And I'm seeing the church. She appeared before the throne of God and they were worshipping. And as they worshipped, it was so powerful a worship. In fact, they were worshiping in unison, all hands lifted and going together on one side like this. And then they all came back together on one side like this. So it was a beautiful sight to behold. But as I looked at them, whenever they did this and did this, the glorious garment the glorious garment they wore everybody focus on me for a moment the garment was glorious white glorious all the way down and then it ran a little bit Sometimes it is called the train of the garment, the train. Okay, thank you. So, as they worshipped and turned, then the glorious garments they wore emitted flashes of glory. That's where I want to focus on. In fact, hivyo, the garment they wore valia, was so glorious mno, that it was like flashes of thousands of cameras were hitting on my eyes. So, that is just how glorious that garment was. Hivyo, ndivyo, ilo vazi la and then, Alafu, After that, hapo, I woke up. Nikamuka. Now, Sasa, I want to share another part. Nataka nishiriki semu nyingine. April 4th, April 4th, 2011. Again, the Lord came to speak with me about the coming of the Messiah. And in that conversation, heaven rolled away, receded. Then I saw the glory be held. The entrance. The glory be held the entrance. When I looked carefully, I saw that it was a glorious garment. He put a glorious garment at the entrance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to base this message to the church on these three conversations. Summarize it for you. What is the Lord saying to the church world over in these three conversations? We are all aware 
somehow all of you can now feel, right? That the church is sitting on the verge of eternity. In fact, many times in your countries like Chicago, New York, New York, you find a column sometimes in a newspaper. And you find a columnist there asking, all these things, is the world coming to an end or what? That means that all people can sense that we have never been this way before. And that we are appear to be sitting on the verge of eternity. Then how much more do Christians realize that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, we are all aware about the message, the, the vision of those two wedding rings. They are on both sides of this uh, wonderful altar. November 1, 2006. And we said very clearly, it is announcing the midnight hour. And announcing to us on the need for preparedness. I'm walking with you step by step to the message. And so we are all familiar with this visitation. It has really gone global now. So in this conversation about the coming of the Messiah, and focusing now on the garment. You can right away tell that the Lord is saying that there is need to prepare for the midnight hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, I want to focus on that preparation for the midnight hour. What is the Lord saying to the church world over seated here? And those tuned in through the, the web. What is this saying to the church based on the three conversations regarding prepare? Preparing for the midnight hour. Anasema nini kwa kanisa kuhusiana na kujianda kwa ajili ya sasita usiku. So we know so, kwa hivyo basi, tunajua, that the Bible is always the reference when kwamba, the Lord speaks. Kwamba, Biblia, ni mahali pa so I want us to go to the Bible hivyo basi, Biblia, right away papa, hapa, and find the scripture that celebrates the coming of the Messiah. Na tupate ambalo na kwa and then see and if alafu, there is an instruction there alafu, tuone kama kunayo maagizo pale. about this garment I I have celebrated in three conversations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So Amen. can we turn to the book of Revelation chapter 19, precious people? Revelation 19, we are reading only three verses. Verses 6 to verse 9. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Kisha nikasikia sauti kama sauti ya umati mkubwa wa watu kama sauti ya maji mengi yaendayo kwa kasi na kama ngurumo kubwa ya radi ikisema haleluya kwa maana bana mungu wetu mwenyezi anamiliki verse 7 mustari wa 7 let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready Tufurahi tushangilie na kumupa utukufu kwa maana harusi ya mwana kondoo imewadia na bibi harusi wake amejiweka tayari 
Then he says on verse 8, he says, Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. And then he says, Fine linen stands for the righteousness, the righteous acts of the saints. Akapewa kitani safi, nyeupe inayonga ili avai. Kisha nasema, hiyo kitani safi, inawakilisha matendo ya haki ya watakatifu. Then the angels say to me, write. Ndipo yule malaika akaniambia, andika. Blessed are those who are invited into the wedding feast of the Lamb. Wamebarikiwa wale, ambao wamealikwa katika karamu ya harusi ya mwana kondo. Then he said, kisha akasema, these are the true words of God. Haya ni maneno ya kweli ya mungu. So that is where, I, this is the reference scripture we have. That's why I want to base this conversation on. Basi hili ndilo andiko la kurejelea. Hapo ndipo tunataka kuekeza majadiliano haya. Now you know that this will give you a message to take back to your nations to prepare the church there. Na sasa mwajua kwamba ita wapatia ujumbe wakupeleka katika mataifa zenu huko, katika kanisa mataifa zenu kule. Now listen precious people. If this is the scripture that celebrates the coming of the Messiah. That celebrates the midnight hour. Then what is the message there? The first thing you see there is that when the Holy Spirit is describing that special day. Anaelezea hiyo siku special. That irretrievable day. Hiyo siku ambayo haiwezi ikarudiwa tena. Very powerfully said yes. Haiwezi ikarudiwa tena. That irretrievable day. Hiyo siku ambayo haiwezi ikarudiwa tena. Irreversible day. Siku ambayo haiwezi ikarejelewa tena. In that description. Katika hayo maelezo. First of all, you hear that there is a historic celebration like never ever before in the kingdom of God. Kwanza kabisa unasikia kwamba kuna kusherekea, kuna ile kusherekea kama vile ijawai kuwa hapo nyumae kule binguni. And that right away tells you that there has never been such a day experienced in the kingdom of God before. Na hiyo inakuambia papo hapo kwamba kuna siku kama hiyo ambayo imewai kuonwa katika ufalme wa mungu. Because he's talking about the grand multitude of tens of thousand times tens of thousand I don't know how many of heavenly angels and hosts are celebrating that yeah, so you have this grand historic multitude celebrating the arrival of that day and that tells you right away that this is a significant day in the kingdom of God. And more than that, even as they celebrate what they say, because when you listen very carefully at the celebration they are saying in other words because this day has arrived now we really know that the Lord God Almighty reigns the way they are talking about it you feel as though this is the day that affirm the reign of God. Affirms the reignship of God. And I'm going to explain to you that in a short while. But even more importantly, within the bigger celebration, that the day long awaited has come. There is now the underlying reason for the celebration. And now you find that he is saying that the reason they celebrate is that the day has arrived. And it's more than that. More than just the arrival of the day. That the day has arrived. And when they look at the church. She is also ready. 
That is the reason. The underlying reason for the celebration. That not just that the day arrived. The long awaited day has arrived. But when they look at the church. The bride. She's ready. Then they said, please celebrate. And that should also tell you that if the day arrives and the church is not ready, there will be no celebration. And I think this is not the weighing of gravity into your salvation. Meaning your salvation has a direct bearing unto this celebration. However, how does heaven know that the church is ready? He says Anasema, that when heaven looks at the church, kanisa, the bride of Christ, wa, wa Christo, he says Anasema, there is a certain benchmark, kuna alama fulani, there is a certain standard, kuna kiwango fulani, there is a certain yardstick. Kuna kipimio fulani that heaven must use ambayo mbingu lazima itumie to tell heaven that the church is ready. Kwambia mbingu kwamba kanisa liko tayari. In other words he's saying kwa maneno mengine anasema it, don't, don't worry I'm not going anywhere really just don't worry please just allow me to preach this message. Listen so he's saying kwa hivyo anasema that there is a yardstick kwamba kuna kipimio there is a benchmark kuna alama there is a scale Kuna kipimio, a balance kuna ratiri, that heaven uses inatumia, to tell them kuambia, that the church is ready. Because he's saying in other words kwa sababu, mengine, for the church to say I am ready, I am ready is not sufficient. Kwa kanisa kusema, niko tayari, niko tayari haitoshi. It is not sufficient. Haitoshi katu. He say anasema, the only way for heaven to know that the church is ready is when they look at the church and they find that she is wearing fine linen bright and clean. Step by step. Step by step. Step by step. So that is why I shared on this garment. So in other words, he's saying that there is a garment that the church ought to wear when she is ready. How does heaven know that the church is ready? He says that when heaven looks at the church the bride of Christ wa, wa Christo, he says anasema, there is a certain benchmark kuna alama fulani, there is a certain standard kuna kiwango fulani, there is a certain yardstick kuna fulani, that heaven must use ambayo mbingu lazima itumie, to tell heaven that the church is ready kwambia mbingu kwamba kanisa liko tayari there is a scale Kuna kipimio, a balance kuna ratiri, that heaven uses inatumia, to tell them kuambia, that the church is ready. Kanisa liko tayari. Because he's saying in other words kwa sababu, mengine, for the church to say I am ready, I am ready is not sufficient. Kwa kanisa kusema, niko tayari, niko tayari haitoshi. It is not sufficient. Haitoshi katu. He say anasema, the only way Njia ya kipeke, for heaven to know ya kujua, that the church is ready kanisa liko tayari, is when they look at the church ni zama kanisa, and they find na wanapata, that she is wearing fine linen safi, bright and clean. Safi na ingarayo. Step by step. Step hatua, by step. Hatua kwa hatua. So, hivyo, that is why 
I shared on this garment. So in other words he's saying that there is a garment that the church ought to wear when she is ready. And that is the garment I want to talk about today. And you are going to find that the reason the church has fallen the church in Kenya I have been battling with you for some time now because of the apostasy the folly in the church. So when I talk about the fall in the church. Right now it's a global phenomenon. You know the things I'm handling in your nations. I know I've come to most of your nations. Inside the church. Even to make it worse inside the pulpit. So you are going to find out that the reason there is a fall in the church. The reason the Lord sent me to the church is because of failure to sustain this garment. So now we understand already that to prepare for the midnight hour there is a garment. There is a required garment. So today I want to characterize this garment that we may understand it better that it may become your major preoccupation as a pastor. The reason you are called as a pastor is to prepare this garment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That when that day arrives, that celebration can be realized in the kingdom of God. Because Jesus went to the cross. Not that you may go to hell. That you may enter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, in this description here, what does the Lord say to the church on this garment? Preparing the church for the coming of the Messiah is essentially to prepare this garment. However, if you hear the way the Holy Spirit celebrates this garment, you hear him say the following. He said the day has arrived and the bride is ready. Then he says finest linen bright and clean has given her to wear. So right away you begin to understand that when Jesus went to the cross he went to purchase for us this garment. And then he describes the character of the garment. But most importantly now is that this garment is given. He says fine linen bright and clean was given given hallelujah hallelujah Meaning, this garment does not belong to the church. Was given. This garment belongs to the Lord. And the Lord gives this garment gracia, gratis, free of charge. I think that is where the gravity of the garment lies. That when the Messiah died on the cross, it was about this garment. That 
everybody wherever you are on the earth. Ya kwamba kila mtu popote ulipo ulimwenguni. If you receive Jesus as Lord. Ikiwa utampokea Yesu kama Bwana. A garment is given. Vazi linapewa. Wow. And then Alafu, me, meaning literally everybody can enter the kingdom of God. Kumaanisha kimsingi kila mtu anaweza kuingia katika ufalme wa Mungu. And this garment, na ili vazi, the way it's being described here, jinsi ambavyo linaelezewa hapa, being given, likipeanwa to the church. Kwa kanisa, if the church had known, ikiwa kanisa lingelijua that this garment is the Lord's garment. Kwamba ili vazi ni vazi la Bwana, simply given to us. Limepewa tu kwetu as grace and mercy kama rehema na huruma then we would have honored this garment basi tungeliheshimu ili vazi hallelujah hallelujah so the first thing that i want to bring to your attention kwa hivyo jambo jambo la kwanza ambalo ningependa kuleta kwa makinifu wenu is that this garment is given to the church ni kwamba ili vazi linapeanwa kwa kanisa given free of charge out of grace linapeanwa bure bila malipo kutoka tu kwa neema meaning kumaanisha the origin of this garment mwanzo wa ili vazi is divine ni ya kiungu is god himself ni mungu mwenyewe these are the robes of the lord basi haya ndio majoho ya bwana and that is so powerful na hiyo ni ya nguvu sana listen to this now nisikiza haya sasa he did not say hakusema that celebration is historic kwamba sherehe ya kihistoria because every church has got for herself a garment kwa sababu kila kanisa limepata vazi lake he did not say that hakusema hivyo you not he did not say that muna gundua kwamba hakusema hivyo he said alisema celebration is historic ya sherehe ya kihistoria because kwa sababu unto the church kwa kanisa is given limepeanwa finest linen kitani safi bright and clean safi na ingarayo now that is where the problem is in the church today sasa hapo ndipo shida ilipo kwa kanisa leo hii look at this now angalia hii sasa a garment is given to all vazi limepeanwa kwa wote that accept jesus ambao wanamkubali yesu the church in the us kanisa katika majimbo moja marekani in taiwan kule Taiwan Iceland Kenya Tanzania Uganda everywhere Iceland Kenya Tanzania Uganda kila mahali Look at this now Angalia haya sasa That means the standard is one Hiyo inamaanisha kwamba kiwango ni kimoja If that standard is the righteousness of the Lord Ikiwa hicho kiwango ni uhaki wa Bwana then there is no way basi hakuna vile someone who say i come from such a denomination Mutu, my standard of holiness is this Mutu, i come sema, from this one my standard of holiness is this kwamba natoka katika dhebu fulani kiwango changu ni hiki natoka katika mahali fulani kiwango changu ni hiki this the normal the standardizing statement is this one basi ile alama ya kunukuu ndio hii meaning kumaanisha Holiness before the Lord. Utakatifu mbele za Bwana. Should be holiness across the nation. Lazima iwe ni utakatifu kote kote katika mataifa. Then why is it that different churches? Ni kwa nini basi kwamba makanisa tofauti tofauti? Different nations. Mataifa tofauti tofauti. Like the battling I'm doing in Europe now. Kama vile vita nilivyonavyo kule Europa sasa. In your churches in Europe with homosexuality at the pulpit. Why? Why would there be different standards? Kama ile vita ambayo una fanya katika makanisa kule Europa ushoga katika makanisa So why should there be separate different standards Ni kwa nini basi kuwe na viwango tofauti tofauti In the church of Christ Katika kanisa la Kristo When he's saying Wakati anasema fine linen kitani safi bright and clean safi na ingarayo was given her, given to all given to the church Alipewa kwa wote ilipewa kwa kanisa Did you understand Je ulielewa So we need to repent and prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Basi tunahitaji kutubu na kujiandaa kwa ajili ya kukuja kwa Masihi. Because on that day, kwa sababu katika hiyo siku, I have seen that day. Nimeiona hiyo siku. On that day, katika hiyo siku, there will not be two standards, one for Kenya, one for Italy. No, 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 no. Hakutakuwa na viwango viwili, moja ya Kenya, moja ya Italy. Hapana, hapana, hapana. The Lord holds the church to a higher standard. Bwana analishikilia kanisa katika kiwango cha juu. What I want to emphasize here. Kile ambacho nataka kusisitiza hapa is that the standard of holiness 
of the Lord is the same world over. Kwamba kiwango cha utakatifu cha Bwana ni sawa kote kote ulimwenguni. If you want to enter the kingdom of God. Kama unataka kuingia katika ufalme wa Mungu. That standard of holiness is in the Bible here. Hicho kiwango cha utakatifu kimo katika Biblia hapa. Because kwa sababu there is no way you can say Hakuna vile unavyoweza kusema that in this particular church. Ya kwamba katika kanisa hili Women can dress like this. Wanawake wanaweza kuvalia fupi namna hii. Or young men on sagging trousers whatever they wear. Ama vijana katika wavalie longi ambazo zinaanguka chochote kile wanavalia. And that is the standard of that church. Na hicho ndicho kiwango cha hilo kanisa. And in this ministry if you look at all my daughters here they are well dressed. Na katika huduma hii ukiangalia mabiti zangu wote hapa wamevalia vyema kabisa. So I think this is help to the church. Listen to this now precious si, people. Sikiza haya sasa watu wa dhamani. The righteousness. Uha of the lord wabwana now listen sasa sikiza in this conversation of the garment katika majadiliano haya ya vazi that the church in your nations need to prepare ambayo kanisa katika mataifa zenu wanahitaji kuandaa another thing you see is the following jambo lingine unaona ni yafuatayo you see unaona that this conversation kwamba majadiliano haya is actually taking place at the gate to eternity yanatendeka katika malango ya umilele because after that you hear him say kwa sababu baada ya hapo unasikia akisema blessed are those wamebarikiwa wale who are invited into the wedding feast ambao wamealikwa katika karamu ya harusi so this is critical this conversation kwa hivyo hii ni nyeti haya majadiliano because actually it is taking place on the verge of eternity that's what i meant by verge of eternity kwa sababu aswa inatendeka katika ukingo wa umilele kwa sababu nikasema katika ukingo wa umilele so look at this now angalia hii sasa he say anasema that blessed are those kwamba wamebarikiwa wale who are invited into the wedding feast of the lamb ambao wamealikwa katika karamu ya harusi ya mwana kondoo and that's why i say this conversation is at the gate kwa sababu nikasema kwamba majadiliano haya yako katika lango the gate of eternity katika lango What a beautiful conversation at what hour in the church now. Ni majadiliano ya kupendeza kiasi gani katika saa gani ya kanisa sasa hivi? However, hata hivyo, why does he say blessed are those who are invited into the wedding feast of the lamb? Ni kwa nini anasema kwamba wamebarikiwa wale ambao wamealikwa katika karamu ya harusi ya mwana kondoo? Listen to this. Sikiza haya. Because kwa sababu that wedding supper takes place in heaven. Hiyo karamu ya harusi inatendeka mbinguni. It takes place in the kingdom of God. Inatendeka katika ufalme wa Mungu. That's why he calls them blessed. Ndio sababu anawaita wamebarikiwa. And if it takes place in the kingdom of God. Na ikiwa inatendeka katika ufalme wa Mungu. Then really it tells you. Basi kwa kweli ya kuambia that those who enter the wedding supper. Ya kwamba wale watakaoingia katika karamu ya harusi have actually defeated death wa meshinda mauti in other words kwa maneno mengine defeated sin wa meshinda dhambi do you now understand je sasa unaelewa and that is so powerful na hiyo ni ya nguvu sana because it will almost redefine for us blessedness in the church kwa sababu karibu itatuelezea kule kubarikiwa katika kanisa he say anasema What is the point in owning the earth? Ni ni faida gani kumiliki ulimwengu mzima? And miss eternity. Na kukosa umilele. Now I understand why they were worshiping there. Sasa naelewa ni kwa nini walikuwa wakiabudu pale. Before the throne of God. Mbele ya enzi ya Mungu. Meaning they had entered. Kumaanisha kwamba walikuwa wameingia. But now we are being told. Lakini sasa tunaambiwa that blessed are they. Kwamba wamebarikiwa wale. And look at this now. Naangalia haya sasa. Considering the fall of man kuzingatia mwanguko wa mwanada in the garden katika shamba la edeni again let me repeat this hebu nirudie haya tena considering how man has fallen kuzingatia jinsi ambavyo mwanadamu ameanguka in the garden katika edeni to see them now kuwaona sasa totally kikamilifu in the kingdom of god katika ufalme wa mungu in other words kwa maneno mengine when you run to check on them 
Unapokimbia kuwachunguza. When they assemble there. Wakati wamekusanyika huko. Worshiping the Lord. Wakimwabudu Bwana. And you check them. Na uwachunguze. Examine them. Na uwachunguze. Investigate them. Na ukawachunguze tena. You will not find the error of Adam. Hautapata makosa ya Adamu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Step by step. Atua kwa atua. Step by step. Atua kwa atua. For the church Kwakanisa. to be able to assemble, to enter and assemble before the throne. That means the fall was erased. And I don't have time to go with you into the jargons. But in Hebrew it's called tamin. tamin. That means repaired in such a way that you don't see a scar. Like you saw the Lord heal people here. You did not see a sutures, stitches, the eye was removed, another eye was put and stitched, whatever. They, they were just as they were but seeing now. In Hebrew, tamin. Meaning made whole again. But if that is what happens the church that enters owing to this garment then that is powerful that means that this garment of righteousness actually bestows upon the church bestows upon the church the character of blamelessness nobody can now stand up and point a finger at her wow wow Nobody can go to her and say, Adam fell, why are you here? Repented. Ametubu. Born again. Ameokoka. Received Jesus. Yesu. Restored. Amerejeshwa. And now can stand before the Holy Na Throne sasa, and anaweza, worship. Anaweza simama mbele ya that is important. Hiyo ni if this garment brings blamelessness to the church. Could it be that the reason the church in Mexico the reason the church in Brazil the church in Sweden in Italy everywhere here the reason the world is pointing a finger at her is because she's not wearing this garment. Did you understand the conversation I talked about? Because he's saying, if you wear this garment, if you wear this garment, it bestows upon the church blamelessness. And if you read the Bible very carefully, I'm going to get to the Bible right now. One of the characters of the bride of Christ. One of the identities, the characters of the bride of Christ. That enters. He says, Anasema, perfect Mukamilifu, mature amekoma, without stain asie na but, lawama, but you find one that says blameless lakini unapata moja inayosema asie na lawama meaning kumaanisha nobody can stand up and point a finger at her hakuna mtu anayeweza kusimama na kumkonyezea kidole there are two options here the reason the church now is being accused in all nations that I go to is because of the following. One of the following. Either she is not wearing the garment of righteousness or she was given 
alipewa and she did not sustain it na kuweza kulisitiri finally then kitani safi zaidi lino finissimo kitani safi zaidi resplandeciente y limpio finally then bright and clean kitani safi safi na ingarayo did not sustain hakuweza kulisitiri so she was blamed hivyo basi akakuwa na lawama that pronouncement of blessedness ya kwamba tangazo hilo la kubarikiwa comes out of the fact linatokana na swala that that church has entered because the wedding feast of the lamb takes place in heaven kwa sababu karamu ya harusi ya mwana kondo wa mungu inafanyika binguni number 2 jambo la pili for them to have entered kwa wao kupata kuingia definitely haswa they have defeated death wameshinda kifo meaning they have defeated sin kumaanisha wameshinda dhambi because you and i know that the bible says kwa sababu wewe na mimi mwajua kwamba biblia yasema It says that the wages of sin inasema kwamba ujira wa dhambi is death ni mauti so now we understand they have defeated death by defeating sin na hivyo basi tunaelewa kwamba wameshinda mauti kwa kushinda dhambi before i handle blamelessness kabla nishughulikie kutokuwa na lawama you must understand the following lazima uelewe yafuatayo that he says kwamba anasema finest linen kitani safi bright and clean safi na ingarayo everybody focus on me kila mtu mkanilenge bright and clean bright inayongana safi when you look at that light unapoangalia huo mwangaza you can say that light is bright unaweza sema kwamba huo mwangaza unangaa meaning it is shining you can see it from afar kumaanisha kwamba unaangaza unaweza kuona kutoka mbali Look at this now. Angalia haya sasa. If that is the garment the church ought to be wearing today. Ikiwa hilo ndilo vazi ambalo kanisa linapaswa kuwa linavalia leo hii. Finest linen. Kitani safi. Bright and clean. Inayongana ni safi. Then it tells you. Kisha inakuambia that when you have the church that is ready. Kwamba unapokuwa na kanisa ambalo liko tayari. That when you have the church that is right kwamba wakati uko na kanisa liloko sawa that church hilo kanisa her garment vazi lake will shine to you litangaza kwako and listen to this now nasikiza haya sasa the darker the dispensation majira yakiwa yenye giza zaidi let me repeat hebu nirudie the darker the moment wakati ukiwa wenye giza zaidi The brighter that garment is supposed to be. Hilo vazi linapaswa kung'aa zaidi. Step by step. Hatua kwa hatua. So you can see where the church ought to be today. Hivyo basi unaweza kuona mahali ambapo kanisa linapaswa kuwa leo hii. She ought to have been the light of this dark world. Linapaswa kuwa nuru ya ulimwengu huu wenye giza. Because right now we've really entered the dark of the darkest. Kwa sababu sasa tumeingia kwenye giza totoro. If she were wearing fine linen bright and clean. Ikiwa angekuwa amevalia kitani safi na ingarayo, she would be emitting light to the world. Anapaswa kuwa anatoa miali ya mwangaza kwa ulimwengu. And that's why the Lord sent me. Na ndio sababu Bwana akanituma. That she may get back to be the light of the world. Kwamba likarejee kuwa nuru ya ulimwengu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the reality and the truth. Huo ndio uhalisia na ukweli mtupu. Now. Sasa Can I move forward and talk about the blamelessness? Je, naweza kusonga mbele na nizungumzie kutokuwa na lawama? Somebody help some people here so I can move on. Mtu uwasaidie watu hapa ili niendelee. I said, nikasema that blamelessness kwamba kutokuwa na lawama is a character that this garment bestows upon the Christian believer. Ni tabia ambayo hili vazi linaweka katika muumini ambaye ni Mkristo. Is a character. Ni tabia that this garment brings to the church kwamba ili vazi linaleta kwa kanisa blamelessness kutokuwa na lawama meaning kumaanisha on that day katika hiyo siku wearing this garment kuvalia ili vazi there will be no accusation hakutakuwa na mashitaka and that is a standard for entry na hicho ndicho kiwango cha kuingia that the bride ya kwamba pia rusi must be blameless lazima awe hana lawama 
Now, Sasa, if Jesus went to the cross ikiwa Yesu to purchase for us this garment, ili vazi, the garment that removes blame from us, vazi toka kwetu, then follow me on this journey safari hii, that you may understand ili mpate kuelewa, how you can go back to your countries gani rudi inchi zenu, and bring correction to the church. Na kuleta marekebisho kwa kanisa. Listen to this now. Sikiza haya sasa. I'm going to navigate you in the Bible. Ninaenda kuwapitisha katika Biblia onto some of the generals of God, generals. Katika baadhi ya majenerali wa Mungu that were found to be blameless. Waliopatikana bila lawama. That you may understand. Ili mpate kuelewa. What this garment? Ni nini ili vazi? was intended to do to the church. Lilipaswa kufanya nini kwa kanisa? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. Mwanzo mlango wa 6 mstari wa 9. Genesis 6 9 precious people. Mwanzo 6 mstari wa 9 watu wa thamani. Genesis 6 9. Mwanzo 6 9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what he says. Hivi ndivyo anavyosema. He says. Anasema this is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. He vindivyo vizazi vya Noah. Noah alikuwa mtu wa haki, asiye na lawama miongoni mwa watu wa wakati wake. Tena alitembea na Mungu. Listen to this now. Noah. 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 In a corrupt generation. Katika kizazi kilichokuwa kimefisadishwa. Full of sin like now. Kimejawa na dhambi kama sasa. The Lord. Bwana. He looked around. Aliangalia. Is there any reason for me not to destroy the earth? Je, kunayo sababu yeyote ambayo kwayo mimi nisiangamize dunia? Is there any person here at all? Je, kuna mute yeyote hapa kamwe? On whose account I should not destroy the earth? Ambaye kwa sababu yake nisiangamize dunia? He looked around. Aliangalia. And looked around. And the Bible says. Na ya sema, in the whole earth. Dunia nzima, he found only Noah. Noah peke yake. Step by step. Hatua kwa hatua. Only Noah. Ni Noah tu. And when he found Noah. Na Noah he caused Noah to prepare. Noah and he saved Noah. Na Noah. Noah alone and his family. Noah peke yake na jami yake. And he says. Na anasema, the earth was as full as this. Kama huu. And he saved Noah alone. Na peke yake. Listen to this now. Haya sasa. Meaning, Kumanisha. when he found somebody that was blameless, mutu na lawama. he saved. Aliokoa. Whether alone, Iwe peke yake. he saved. Aliokoa. And so, Basi, if the Messiah went to the cross msalabani, to bring you a garment vazi, of righteousness na uhaki, that would exonerate the church kanisa, from the blame of Adam, na ya Adamu, blamelessness, kutokuwa na lawama, then that means basi hiyo ya manisha, the Lord intended that even if the entire earth be full of sin like now. Ya kwamba hata kama ulimwengu mzima uwe umejawa na dhambi kama sasa. And the church. Na kanisa. Where the garment of righteousness. Malivalie vazi la haki. That bestows blamelessness on her. Ambayo inaweka kutokuwa na lawama juu yake. He would save her alone. Ata liokoa peke yake. That is the treasure. Iyo ndio hazina. That he brought us from the cross. 
if the church had known this ikiwa kanisa lingelichua haya ingeifadhi she would have preserved ingeifadhi this garment hili vazi that however rotten ya kwamba hata kama kuna muozo kiasi gani earth be hata kama ulimwengu umeoza kiasi gani if i find only one that is blameless ikiwa nitampata tu mmoja ambaye hana lawama the way he found noah jinsi alivyompata noah i would save her nitamuokoa can we go to another je tunaweza kwenda kwa nyingine genesis 17 verse 1 Mwanzo 17 mstari wa kwanza. Look at what he says here. Angalia vile anavyosema hapa. When Abraham was 99 years old, wakati Abraham, wakati Abraham alipokuwa umri wa miaka 99, the Lord appeared to him and said, Bwana akamtokea akamwambia, I am God Almighty. Mimi ndimi Mungu mwenyezi. Walk before me and be blameless. Enenda mbele zangu na uishi bila lawama. And we all know na sote tunajua that when the Lord found blamelessness in Abraham ya kwamba wakati Bwana alipopata kutokuwa na lawama kwa Abraham he blessed him alimbariki until the Messiah came from hadi Masihi akatoka kutoka kwake today leo i'm bringing the gravity of the garment to you ninaleta uzito wa vazi kwako why kwa nini Blessed are those who are invited into the wedding feast. Now we are seeing that that blessedness actually has a bearing on this trait, this identity, this character of blamelessness that the garment puts on the church because he says he is able to destroy the whole earth and save the only church that is blameless abraham now abraham sasa things were bad mambo yalikuwa mabaya sin Dambi. until he caused him to separate also from his family hadi akamsababisha ajitenge kutoka kwa jamii yake but guess what lakini hebu kisia nini he said anasema because i found you blameless before me kwa sababu nimekupata usiye na lawama mbele zangu i always tell the pastors and the bishops here kila wakati uambia wachungaji na maaskofu hapa that in whatever you do in your ministry ya kwamba katika chochote ufanyacho katika huduma yako Make sure Hakikisha. that as people follow your trail over the years. Ya kwamba watu wanapokufuata miaka yote. When they look back, wanapotazama nyuma. There is nothing they can use to point a finger at you. Hakuna kitu wanaweza tumia kukukonyezea kidole. The pastors and the bishops I disciple they know that. Wachungaji na maaskofu ambao wafunza wanajua hayo. In other words, kwa maneno mengine, in whatever you do, katika chochote ufanyacho, whether it is just a joke. Iwe tu ni mzaha. You know the way people joke. Jinsi ambavyo watu fanya mzaha. Make sure. Hakikisha When people look back, wakati watu watatazama nyuma, they nyuma, cannot find a place where to point a finger. Au watapata nafasi ya kukukonyezea kidole. Blamelessness. Kutokuwa na lawama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, Kwa let us go to another general called Job. Hebu tuende kwa generali mwingine aitwaye Ayubu. Until the Lord asked Satan, have you tried Job? Hadi Bwana akamuliza shetani, je umemjaribu Ayubu? Why? Kwa nini? Because of blamelessness. Kwa sababu ya kutokuwa na lawama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job chapter 1 verse 1. Ayubu mlango wa kwanza mstari wake wa kwanza. Then we'll read verse 8, only two verses. Alafu tasoma mstari wa 8 mstari miwili tu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah the world. Hallelujah ulimwengu. <laughs> Because the whole world is here, right? Kwa sababu ulimwengu mzima uko hapa. He says in the land of Uz there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright and he feared God and shunned evil. Katika nchi ya Uz walishi mtu ambaye jina lake aliitwa Ayubu. Mtu huyu alikuwa hana hatia, hana lawama, naye alikuwa mkamilifu, alimcha Mungu na kuepuka ubaya. If you read verse 8, iko utasoma mstari wa 8. Then I will explain. He says, then the Lord said to Satan, 
have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on the earth like him. He is blameless and upright, one who fears God and shuns evil. Ndipo Bwana akamwambia shetani, "Je, umemwangalia huyo mtumishi wangu Ayubu, mtu ambaye hakuna mwingine duniani aliye kama yeye, asiye na hatia, ni mnyofu, mwenye kumucha Mungu na kuepuka na uovu." You understand? Je, unaelewa? In other words, in the three visions here, when he showed me the glorious garment, a meeting glory, I said, even if I touched the garment with, with by the way, there's a part I do not share. When John the Baptist was standing next to me, because of time I did not share this. And his garment became transfigured. When we came back from seeing the changes in Jerusalem. And, and so, when, when his garment transfigured. And I said, the Lord made me know that even if you touch with a pen, you will see that, that thing. That mark. That's how glorious it was. And in that same conversation, when I looked at myself, I found that I had also been glorified. And the message was very simple. The message was those events I described. Ujumbe ulikuwa hayo matukio naliyoyaeleza. Then the web, then the web. Iko kwenye mtandao, iko kwenye mtandao. Those events changes that were happening on the earth which ha- which some of them have been fully accurately fulfilled. Hayo matukio na mabadiliko ambayo baadhi yake yametimilizwa kikamilifu. Those changes. Hayo mabadiliko. You remember when they happened and I came back by the throne? Unakumbuka yalipotendeka alafu nikarudi tena hapa? And I found that John is still here. Na nikapata kwamba Yohana angali hapa. And his garment transfigured. Na vazi lake limebadilika. And then you remember he said behold the lamb alafu nakumbuka alisema tazama mwana kondoo then the lamb come kisha mwana kondoo anakuja did you understand je ulielewa yeah someone understood the secret i'm talking about here je mtu amelewa siri ambayo unanena kuhusu hapa meaning kumaanisha when those changes take place wakati mabadiliko hayo yamefanyika it is time to have a glorious garment ni wakati wa kuwa na vazi la utukufu because kwa sababu punde si punde, punde, si punde short moment kwa punde si punde, the messiah will come masii atakuja there is so much information i have some of which i don't share kuna mambo mengi nilionayo baadhi yake sishiriki because you know some are for me kwa sababu unajua mengine ni yangu some are veiled mengine imezuiliwa but some i give openly na nyingine napeana waziwazi so listen to this kwa hivyo sikiza haya what is powerful is this kile kilicho cha nguvu ndicho hiki that now this garment i was describing here ya kwamba sasa ili vazi ambalo nilikuwa naelezea hapa fine linen kitani safi bright and clean safi na ingarayo was given to the church Ali, ilipewa kanisa and when she was wearing it na alipokuwa amelivalia and that day arrives na hiyo siku inawasili then a historic celebration consumed the earth basi consumed ile, heaven ile sherehe ya kihistoria inaingia mbinguni ikakula mbinguni ikakula mbinguni so listen to this now kwa hivyo sikiza haya sasa this garment ili vazi now i've understood sasa nimeelewa how it allows jinsi inaruhusu the church that was in sin kanisa lilokuwa katika dhambi to finally enter stand here Hati. and worship before the holy throne hatimaye kuingia hapa ndani na kuabudu mbele ya enzi takatifu because of this character blamelessness kwa sababu ya hii tabia kutokuwa na lawama that it bestows upon the church ambalo inaweka kwa kanisa also now na pia sasa now there is homosexuality in the church sasa kuna ushoga katika kanisa mane mane the gospel of mane is being preached globally pesa 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 injili ya pesa inahubiriwa kote kote ulimwenguni false prophets manabii wa uongo false apostles mitume wa urongo that i'm cleaning up all over your countries ambayo unasafisha kote kote katika nchi zenu look at this now angalia hii sasa if that church ikiwa hilo kanisa that is in this gospel of prosperity and money ambayo iko katika injili hii ya ufanisi na pesa that came from the devil ambayo ilitoka kwa shetani the gospel injili that says you can bribe god inayosema unaweza ukamhonga mungu and then get away with holiness alafu utupilie mbali utakatifu and yet we know na ile hali tuwajua for without holiness kwa maana bila ya utakatifu nobody will see the lord hakuna 
So that's why I'm saying even the church that is in falsehood in lies and money immorality, abortions and everything even that church if she can repent now the blood of Jesus can still be stored upon her blamelessness that is the revival of repentance that the Lord is bringing to the nations but now listen to this we have found that this character actually is the treasure of salvation. This blamelessness. Because we found out that that is the uniqueness of the church. That when he found that character in Noah, he saved Noah. When he found that character in Abraham, he made him an icon, the father of faith today. When he finds that character in Job, that character of blamelessness has really molded Job to fear God, to shun evil, to the extent that the Lord says, have you tried job? Telling Satan, meaning unshakable, the church is supposed to have been unshakable. That is the correction the Lord is bringing to the church. Now, can I move forward? Look at this now. If you look at the Old Testament, this trait of blamelessness that the, gov the government, the government of righteousness places on the church. When you look at the Old Testament, in the days of the temple, the temple of Moses, the temple of Moses, you'll find that this character that today I am celebrating before the church. This character was associated with the sacrificial animal that was offered in the temple. The Lord demanded of them in the temple of Moses that when they offer a sacrifice an animal for sacrifice that animal be a blameless animal and yet what their definition of blamelessness was this is what it was. Without defect. Without deformity. Without error. If you get time, because of time, I'm just going to summarize things for you. If you get time and read Leviticus chapter 1, verse 3. Ukipata wakati usome mambo ya walawi Sura ya tatu Sura ya kwanza Wa kwanza mlangu wa tatu Sura ya kwanza mstari wa tatu Mstari wa tatu sorry about that If you read Leviticus chapter 1 verse 3 Ukisoma mambo ya walawi mlangu wa kwanza mstari wa tatu Leviticus chapter 1 verse 6 Mambo ya walawi mlangu wa kwanza mstari wa sita I can just read one just to underscore this Ninaweza tu kusoma moja ili kuleta haya Leviticus 1 3 Mambo ya walawi moja mstari watatu. You hear him say without defect. Kuna musikia kisema bila lawama. Follow me on this. Munifuata kwa haya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he is to offer a male without defect. 
kama sadaka hiyo ni ya kuteketezwa kutoka kwenye kundi la ngombe atamtoa ngombe dume asiye na dosari asiye na dosari swahili without defect sin manchas in spanish asiye na dosari so hivyo in the time of the temple of moses katika wakati wa hekalu la musa this character that the beautiful garment of the cross brings to the church hii tabia ambalo vazi la kupendeza la msalaba inaleta kwa kanisa the character that qualifies the church to enter the wedding supper of the lamb tabia ambayo inahitimisha kanisa kuingia katika karamu ya harusi ya mwana kondoo blamelessness kutokuwa na lawama meaning innocence restored kumaanisha kwamba amerejeshwa meaning guiltlessness guiltlessness no kwamba, guilt kwamba hana makosa but in the temple of moses lakini katika hekalu la musa he now says without defect was equal to blameless anasema asiye na dosari inatoshana kutokuwa na lawama that is powerful follow me on this hiyo ni nguvu nifuate kwa hii sasa You never know the importance of something until you lose it. Hadi ukipoteze. So there are many scriptures that describe the offering that was given in the temple. Kwa hivyo kunayo maandiko mengi yanayoelezea ile sadaka iliyokuwa inatolewa katika hekalu. However, hata hivyo, if you look at the temple, ikiwa utalitazama hekalu, they say without defect. Inasema bila dosari. the lord mighty prophet of the lord the lord spoke to me about a meeting that he had in me to a healing service and i see a very major visitation that will take place there i see the lord is showing me rain that there is rain coming also there is rain coming so the lord is bringing rain the rain of the holy spirit that is going to take place in a place where when the man of god stands he will be able to see 
some buildings and then there is this tall building towards, it's as if you are moving towards a valley and then there is a tall building there and the top of the building like the stairs steps like that and beyond a little bit on the other side of the hill there is a hill that slopes there is a, there is a slope on the other side a hill that runs on the other side at the end of the valley there is now a hill with residential quarters on that side Before we go to the French Guiana, we are going for that mission. They are preparing. Everybody's ready. The pastors, the everybody, everything. So as we are going, before we go, the Lord speaks to me. And he says, when you get there, heaven will open there. And the rain, the Holy Spirit rain of God, will come down. And all of you have that prophecy. You heard it. And in that prophecy, he defines... The exact location. Uh, you know, rarely has he done that. That when he's standing at the altar of the Lord like this, when the man of God will stand at the altar like this, when he looks down like this, he will see a tall building. It, it will go a little bit like that, but you see a tall building, but the roof of that building like stairs. You heard the promise, right? Yes. Like steps. Huh? like steps. And on the other side is a hill and there are residential houses like this. So, I go to South Africa. When we went to South Africa, the venue of the healing service was not the venue I saw in the dream. No. This was a stadium, by the way. So now, my son, the Archbishop, I told him a few weeks ago, go there and stand where the altar is supposed to be. And take for me a picture there. In the dream, so when the heavens open, when heaven opens, then the very, very spectacular visitation and rain comes down, almost on his servant really, you know. Then the rain now with wind spreads other places. And that picture arrived, I think, yesterday. Yes, my Lord. When I looked at it, I said, hey, the exact color, the exact color. The roof is like this, like this, like that. Excuse me. When I looked, I said, this looks like this. That I described in that prophecy, which is on YouTube. Because the prophecy is on the YouTube, so you can fall and get the exact... It, this time, he describes the exact venue. The exact place where that visitation. He describes where to take place. Praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen. The Lord has spoken with me in a very, very tremendous way about the historic revival that is coming to Nakuru. I see that I'm in the meeting, and when I'm at the meeting, heaven opens and rain comes down into the meeting. God himself will descend down in Nakuru. The Lord showed me I'm in the meeting, and rain comes down. Oh, oh, heaven opens and rain comes down in that city. And in this, speaking about air visitation, this time, he was very specific. 
Hallelujah. Extremely specific about the visitation to the extent that he actually defined the location, the specific location of the visitation. I was standing at the altar of the Lord and there was the multitude of the big meeting, tremendous sea of people, and I could see the venue of the meeting, its terrain, and there is a tall building that I was describing as being creamish yellow building. I kept saying creamish yellow building, something like that. And this building, I kept saying that this building, look at this now, that the roof is like stairs, like this, like this, like steps, stairs, like this, like this, stairs, like steps. But on the background of that tall building, there is a rising hill on the other side. And when I looked at the rising hill from on the meeting, I mean the meeting, I could see the residential quarters. In that meeting, heaven opens into the meeting. And when and when heaven opens, look. A strange rain comes down like a column. After that, then the rain now goes this side. This side. See my hand. This side. And when it goes this side, it goes like this. Look now. You see this kind of... Uh, this kind. Another way. Like that. Praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen. Now, uh, uh, Pastor Joan, the Lord has spoken with me. He has spoken with me about the big meeting that is coming up in Nakuru. The super glorious grand mega Nakuru revival. And uh, he has continued to now speak with me about the greater detail of the visitation that he has prepared for the Church of Christ world over from Nakuru. And the Lord says that this is going to be a historic visitation. And uh, I also see myself in the meeting. The Lord showed me myself, and my face was wet. My face was very, very wet. That the Lord opened heaven and my face was wet. The glory of the Lord Utukufu wabwana. has descended in this place. Hapa. And I see rain here. Na ninaona mvua hapa. Oh, 
Elijah. Mungu wa kuongozi wa Elia. I welcome you here in the mighty name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. My God is setting people free. Mungu wangu anawaweka watu We are in for a major showdown. Tuko kwa ajili ya kushtuka. You are good God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. You are good God. Yeye ni Mungu mwema. Asante. Yeye ni Mungu mwema. 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 It looks like the drops of rain have fallen on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Drops of rain have fallen on me. Even you? Yes. It's raining here. Hallelujah. to the Lord. Uchukufu kwa Bwana. Revival. Uchukufu. Drops of rain are falling on me. Matone ya mvua yananiangukia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what I say. Hiki ndicho nalichosema. I announced it in French Guyana. Nilitangaza French Guyana. I announced it on radio here. Nikaitangaza kupitia masafa ya radio hapa. That when I come here, kwamba nitakapokuja hapa, the heavens must open. Bingu lazima zitafunguka. The rain must come down. Na mvua lazima ishuke chini. It is raining here now. Inanyesha hapa sasa. I feel the rain. Na hisi mvua. I hear the rain. Na isikia mvua. I see the rain. Ninaona mvua. It is raining now. Let it rain. 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 Let it r
why you come. Come on. 